hello. And no, no, try again. Hello, and welcome to something a little different. Uh, today, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be making an asset for a game project that I am currently working on, and I'm going to record myself making it. And it's not quite going to be a tutorial. Think of it as sort of a mixture between a time lapse and a tutorial. I'll be making an asset that looks very similar to what we see here right now, a set of futuristic industrial uh, wings, and I'll be explaining what tools and techniques I'm using as I make it, and if I'm doing something either highly repetitive or if I'm just doing something I've already explained the technique for, I'm going to speed the video up so you don't have to sit through that. But I will make sure to explain all the techniques and um, modeling philosophies that I'm going through. We're going to be in 3D coat the entire time. Um, not sure if I'm going to stop at just the sculpting or if I'll also go into retopology. It'll depend on how long it takes. And... But uh, let's get started. Uh, this may be the first of uh, many videos in this format that I do. I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, so as you see, we have a pair of um, high-tech looking wings right here. And we're going to be making something very similar, except we're going to be designing something that looks a little more like this. Some, oh, I know it's not the best drawing in the world, but you should get the idea. This is much uh, a much sort of sleeker design, much pointier, a little bit more aggressive, whereas um, these wings were a bit blockier in their overall design. Most of the... Uh, detail is not in the drawing, I'm just going to kind of apply that as I see fit as I go, but the overall shape is there. So let's get started. Okay, now this may look a little weird to you, but let me just explain what the uh, philosophy is behind this. This wing is part of a series of different components that are all designed to fit together. So you see all of these pieces, and it's that the wings from one set all have this component on them and they are designed to fit into this component on the fuselage that I make which are being modeled separately so all these uh, are going to be modular in design if I can actually just really quickly bring up uh, one that I've already done here we go so this is an example of what MUN might look like. So as you see, we have the fuselage, we have the wings, and the cockpit. So all of these were actually modeled separately, and then I combined them together. So today we're just going to be making a set of wings, like this. This is another configuration I made. Just to give you an idea of what this is for and why the scene starts out looking like this. So for the wings, we won't be needing this, or this, or this, or this. Every set of wings I'm making just needs to have these two components. So if we look back at our, at our reference, this bit that we see on the side here, on the left side, that is going to be this coupling and this triangular shape here with three circles in it is this component. Alright, that should just give you an idea of why I am starting out the way that I am starting out and what all this is supposed to mean. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in my reference image. So this image is a uh, top-down perspective, meaning that um, it's how the wing would look if we were looking at it down the y-axis. 
So in order to do that, in order to bring a reference image into 3D Coat, I can go up to Camera right here, and I can go to Background, and then Ref Image for Y Axis. It'll ask me for an image file, so I'll find the one I just showed you guys. And there it is. Now if it comes in just looking like uh, an image by itself without the gizmos around it, look up here at reference images and make sure that this is this little uh, push pin is pointed down. So now we have this, as you can see it is substantially too large for us. And so I need to scale it down. I can do that by grabbing on these little corner dots. And let me change my stroke mode there real quick. Okay. So it might help to look at this from the top perspective. So I will hit 5 to go to orthographic and then 7 to look at it from the top. And now I can make sure this is sized just right. So I'll grab the corners again. I can grab the arrows, move them around. Okay, that's just about right. So while I'm here, I'm going to grab my little triangular weapon mount, that's what I've called it, which is this layer, primary weapon mount. I'll grab that, use my transform tool, and just bring that roughly to where I want it. Might also take this time right now to um, move my reference image down so it's not in the way of my modeling. Let me bring up some other pieces here. So these two pieces are placed because that's roughly the size of the average fuselage. So I don't want these wings to be, you know, overly large. So that size, it's a little on the big side, but I think I'll manage. Might make it a little bit smaller, but we'll see. Yeah, just a tiny bit smaller should do. Okay. Now we can get started. So the very first thing I need to do is that if we look at our reference image, and I'll bring it up here, you can see that this block on the left side, which is supposed to represent this coupling, isn't straight. As you see, it's angled inward as we approach the wing. So we need to fix that on our model here. So a really easy way to do this is if I look at it from an orthographic view, hit the 2 key to look at it from the front. If I grab the Pose tool and I edit the Pose fall off to make sure that it's a straight line, that it's linear like this, I can drag from one side, the side that faces the fuselage, Oh, I'm on paint select. That would be why. If I change that to be a line, make sure the pose fall off for that is still linear. And then if I click and drag from one side to the other, making sure that my cursor, that this red line in the middle is perfectly flat, then what I can do is I can scale it down and you'll see that it tapers off quite nicely. So I can do that from the front first. Then if I hit the 7 key, go to the top view. And then I can taper it down like that. And hitting 5 to get back to my perspective view, I can see that that has a very nice shape to it. And I just hit enter to apply that. And there we go. That is just about all the changes that will need to be done to this piece. For the rest of this, we're going to be adding additional volumes.